Hello, good evening and welcome to the political hour of things. We are starting a brand new program here on Paradise TV. My name is Almami Fanding Tal. I want to start having very honest, very in-depth uh, conversation with compatriots, with Gambian experts, with Gambians who have distinguished themselves in various walks of life. I believe a program like this is long overdue. I believe we need to have programs that go behind headlines. We have programs that can also analyze the goings-ons in our country. Our country is going through a transition and it is extremely important that we have a dialogue about change. We have a dialogue about development. We have a dialogue about the things that unite us as a people. So every week on Monday at 6 o'clock, uh, we will have this uh, one hour of conversation. We are calling it the political economy hour. I know that is a mouthful. And maybe uh, we would uh, adjust the name, the title, and uh, the uh, topics we would be discussing uh, as we progress along. But uh, without uh, further ado, I think I will tell you today, because we are coming out of a very successful um, rainy season, uh, we have a guest as our first guest, uh, Mr. Momudu Njai, uh, Momudu S. Z. Njai, the founder and CEO of Farm Fresh. Uh, he has expertise in uh, technologies. Um, he is an uh, agripreneur. Uh, he is an uh, entrepreneur. And he has been uh, breaking new grounds. He has won international uh, recognition and some awards uh, over the uh, years. Uh, he is a relatively younger man, at least younger than me. Um, uh, and uh, he is uh, breaking new ground. So today he is our guest. And uh, we want to have uh, guests like him going forward throughout our program. We like to talk about uh, development, really. That is what this political economy hour is going to focus on. How do we get development? How do we understand uh, the triggers and the levers of, of development uh, in the 21st century? We are a very small country, uh, but we have been blessed with a very high quality uh, human resources. Uh, Gambians have uh, distinguished themselves all over the world, uh, up to uh, on the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, people like uh, the Chief Justice of the Gambia, people like uh, Alaji Abdullahi Jane, who was on the Secretary General of the United Nations for the Economic Commission for Africa, uh, people like Mrs. Uh, Fatubom Ben Souda. Um, so really, uh, if you go into the uh, private sector, people like uh, uh, Mr. Lamin Manjang uh, of the Standard Chartered uh, Bank Group. So really, um, we have uh, the pedigree, we have the talent. Uh, what we haven't had so far is bringing all the elements together uh, through conversation, through dialogue, through partnerships to move our country forward. So the effort uh, the, in this program is really to get every uh, uh, available expertise that Gambia can benefit from uh, for that kind of conversation to be possible. Um, the first series of conversations would be around uh, agriculture uh, and green growth and uh, uh, sustainable development. This is the fifth anniversary 
of the declaration of the SDGs, that's the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. And we are very optimistic, we are very hopeful that these goals, uh, when they are realized, 2020 to 2030 has been declared as the uh, decade of action. So these conversations around these 17 goals will also be part and parcel of our programs. And uh, we are looking forward to interacting across the board, generationally, uh, as much gender diversity as possible. And uh, the effort really is to bring out the best ideas to help and guide our development process, to help and guide our transition. Of course, December we are hoping that we can dedicate to analysis of uh, budget 2021. So uh, topics like that, uh, which are occasional and topical, uh, we will try and in incorporate them. But we want to go sector by sector, uh, uh, level of development by level of development, whether it's at the uh, level of the central government or at the level of local government or at the level of civil society organization and other public benefit organization like uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, we will try as much as possible to uh, uh, trigger a conversation that can be beneficial to people who are listening to this. The objective really is to start a critical conversation that we should have had at the beginning of this uh, transition from dictatorship to a political system that is progressive and that is plural and that is also uh, democratic. So I think uh, in a roundabout way, this was the introduction of our program. And we think um, uh, this kind of conversation should be happening across the board. Uh, and we are going to be using our languages. I can speak uh, two of our Gambian languages. Um, uh, therefore, if my guests uh, would allow it, um, or if my guests would prefer it, uh, we will speak in languages that we can understand ourselves uh, better. So, ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful uh, audience, we are very pleased that um, uh, you are able to join us today. And uh, like I said, we will be here every uh, Monday, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, to talk about the political economy of things. Thank you for, for, for watching, and welcome uh, to the program, Mr. Njai. Thank you very much for having me, Mr. Tua. Mr. Dyer, like I said, um, this is going to be an honest conversation uh, between brothers uh, about the state of things, the state of play, as far as you are concerned. You are a young Gambian. You have been engaged in uh, enterprises. You have been an innovator. Uh, you have, uh, from tech technology to uh, uh, salesman, uh, to agriculture, to all kinds of uh, partnerships. Uh, I, I think uh, it would be of benefit if our listeners and our viewers could uh, hear at least a part of your journey. Mm -hmm. How did you get into this uh, frame of things? Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, my brother, Mr. Tal. It's a pleasure to be here and also an honor uh, to be invited in your maiden edition of this very important program. And, and, and uh, the theme also, the political economy, I think it's very, very important. Um, you've already introduced, uh, you've already mentioned my name, Modu NS Njai, uh, or Modu NS Z Njai, um, son of the late uh, Bindo Njai, whom a lot of people know. Uh, and I'm honored to always... He was, was a very famous man. <laughs> yes. He was and, a very and famous And I'm always honored to... to and feel privileged to mention that I am his son, mm -hmm. his only son. I have three elder sisters, um, two of them are living abroad. I am the last mm -hmm. in the family. Um, yes, I grew up in the Gambia, grew up in Banjul, in Serakunda, Town, Kutu, Bakau. Of course, Bakau is actually, that's the root, that's, that's, that's the base, basically. And I did my primary, my basic education, um, Methodist prep, then 
prim uh, Serapunda Primary School, Mrs. Ndao, Ndao's Comprehensive, you call it. Uh, went, on, went, on, went over to um, St. Augustine's High, so I'm a sales guy. Sorry, no <laughs> <offense>. <laughs> I know you're, you're, you're a Gambia High you yeah. know, product, yeah. but yeah. we've yeah. always been the best yes. at books or play. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you're my guest, so, so I'm not going to make any comments. Okay, so um, really, um, I've always had a passion for technology. I've always been very curious uh, all throughout my high school years. Um, I remember way back in in the 90s, uh, like in the n around 1990, you know, um, 91, 92, um, I used to go to GTTI for part-time classes in computers, computer, you know, to learn computing. Those, those were very early days for computing in the Gambia, and very, very few even, people. Even in the world. Even in the world, you know. So really, uh, you can say that um, I was really um, very much up to date, uh, at par with the rest of the world, you know, uh, when computing started, or when it really took off. And, um, you know, that's when I developed this passion to just innovate and try to create something, uh, doing some graphic design, you know, I remember having uh, Mr. Yunus Abba, who's now working with the UN, and he was one of my first lecturers. And uh, Mr. Murunjai, who's also a relative, but also one of my lecturers uh, back then. And um, so I really had that passion. So when I graduated from St. Augustine's High, uh, naturally I pursued my education at GTTI. I remember my father asking me if I had the nerves, you know, they used to call it the nerve syndrome. Yes. You know, yes, yes. <laughs> to study abroad yes. immediately because my colleagues, my classmates back then, you know, everyone was living for the US, UK, wherever, you know. But um, for me, I just had a different uh, um, perception, you know. I was not in a haste mm -hmm. to go for further studies, and uh, he was surprised. I told him, my passion is um, computing, computer science. I would have gone to do my A-levels, but of course there was no uh, course, uh, there was no program at the A-level, le um, you know, uh, in terms of computing, you can't study computer science uh, uh, during your A-level. So naturally I went to GTTI and then did two -year pro a two-year program, uh, did my foundation, advanced diploma, national diploma, and a couple of other certificates I can't remember. Uh, to become a graduate in computer science, advanced diploma, and um, later on also became a lecturer uh, at GTTI, a uh, lecturer trainee, if I must say. And, uh, you know, one of my main mentors then was, uh, a lot of people would re remember him, he was an African-American, because I learned a lot from him. He was na his name was Talat Al-Ahmari Red. Mm -hmm. Um, this was back in 95, you know, then to 96. And, uh, that was those around the time of the coup d'etat? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. This was just after it the coup d'etat. It wasn't disruptive in any way? Um, the, uh, towards your educational pursuit, I mean. Lo no, no, it wasn't, to be honest, yeah, it wasn't. Um, it was in 94 when I was just transitioning from St. Augustine's to GTI. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, it wasn't, you know. I'm very much uh, aware. I, I can vividly remember how okay. it happened and how Mr. Edward Singer came to St. Augustine High and all that stuff, all that drama, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so I started my training uh, at GTTI, I became a lecturer. Uh, Mr. Talad really inspired me. I, I, I keep mentioning his name because I'm, I always believe in uh, gratitude, giving gratitude to people who really made, it, made a difference in your life, impacted your life. Are you, are you guys still in touch? Yeah, yeah, we were very much in touch. He's much older now. Uh, even back then, I think he was in his mid-50s. Okay. So this was 25, 30 years ago, I don't know, 25 years ago. Yeah. So he must be in his 80s now, mm -hmm. and you will not believe it. Uh, he's still doing his certifications in coding, and, you know, wow. he's a geek, like a real geek up to the, Fantastic. you know, Fantastic. amazing. Fantastic. But um, the reason why I'm mentioning him, his name is that... Uh, it was not only on the academic side of things, mm -hmm. but also on the spiritual side of things, because he was a, a very pious man, mm -hmm. a Muslim, you know, mm -hmm. uh, who converted to Islam in the 60s or 70s, wow, wow. and became a Hafizul Quran, and I ended up learning a lot from him in terms of my deen, you know, my, my, you know, and I learned a lot from him. So 
I owe him a debt of... So, so, so that's like a good mentor. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's basically what you're saying. a very good saying. mentor. I mean, yeah. how, how do you see yeah. then and now this whole culture of mentorship yeah. and yeah. Uh, getting our young ones ready yeah. uh, for the world of work, yes. uh, for, for more uh, diversity yeah. in terms of career options? Because I think it's very interesting what yes. you said. Yes, yes I mean, uh, when you finish A-levels in those days, yeah. uh, you, you are frantically looking for a scholarship yeah. uh, to go out, yeah. uh, and the government of the day then yeah. Uh, made sure that uh, there is sufficient uh, scholarship. Myself, yes. uh, I was uh, lucky after my Gambia High School yes. days uh, to uh, to teach very briefly yeah. uh, for a, like a, a year, yeah. and I was uh, lucky to get a scholarship to go and study uh, law in India without any yeah. influence from my father or right. from my family. Right. I mean, and I went with uh, quite a few, uh, about seven Gambians. Okay. We were among the pioneers okay. to, to okay. go on the Gambia government, India government uh, scholarship program. Uh, but uh, I remember very, dis uh, uh, very uh, clearly yeah. when we were notified that we have got this scholarship, mm -hmm. we went to the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. and I met a very prominent educationist. I'm not going to mention mm -hmm. his name mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I was so jubilant to mm. tell him that, well, I've got this scholarship. Mm. You know what he told me? Mm. That poor country, what are you going to do there? Mm. I mean, India mm. and those, in those days was quite yes. uh, a very uh, 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 yeah. poor country. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they had the pillars, yeah. they had the foundation. Yeah. Uh, from 1991, they start reforming yeah. uh, their political economy yeah. and start, you know, becoming yeah. a, a competitor on the global Seen. So by the time we finish our programs until the turn of the century, yeah. they start becoming uh, a major global force. Yes. But just to say uh, the importance yes. of mentorship, yes. I think uh, would be one of the takeaways I yes. will take uh, from this. Yes. But okay. after all of that experience, yeah. then what, what happened? Yeah, so, so later on, I... I uh, Naturally, not naturally, but later on I left GTCI um, and went to, I had an offer, of a, jo a job offer. I was very young back then. I think I was 21 or 22 um, and I had a job with Continent Bank, the now defunct, yeah. you know, and I uh, became the uh, assistant IT manager of the bank okay. at a very young age, like, uh, like 21 or 22, okay. not more than that. Uh, and. Um, that also became very challenging for me, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, I've always loved challenges, and mm -hmm. I was able to. Um, I've always been, without sounding like bragging, but I've always been a quick learner. You know, like a lot of things I've not learned through, you know, the uh, proper way. What I mean by that, going to school to study a particular subject and pass and get this grade. Uh, there's a lot of I do a lot of things, or I know a lot of things through my own efforts to through my own research. But, but <laughs> yeah. uh, Mr. Jai, that's the yeah. only way yeah. to break new ground. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know that Steve Jobs does not graduate from exactly. university. Exactly. Uh, Bill Gates, yeah. uh, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. you name them. Yeah. If you want to yeah. break out of the mold, yeah. uh, you cannot be uh, yeah. constrained by the mold. So I don't think uh, you need to apologize yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, yeah. for, for that so, quality. Yeah. And uh, where does that come from, this yeah. uh, non-conformist approach? Uh, yeah, to doing uh, things. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, probably um, from my, my late father, I would say, you know, he's, he's always inspired me and always, uh, just like you said, I had no pressure, uh, none of my parents, neither of them ever w uh, asked me to do or study a particular subject for whatever reason, which was very common and still common. No, I wanted to be a, a doctor, a lawyer like me, that sort of thing. No, no, no. Free will go with your passion, you know what you want, you know, and uh, pursue it, persevere, 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 hard work, honesty. So these are the things that my late father inculcated, inculcated in me, and uh, I think it really paid dividends. And um, when I left um, Continent Bank, mm -hmm. um, I went briefly to the U.S. Mm -hmm. to do some further studies, and I came back in 2003, mm -hmm. and I was hired by the I, I came in October 2003 
November 2003, I was hired by the United Nations Development Program in, in, in Cape Point uh, mm -hmm. as an independent IT consultant. Mm -hmm. This was during the time when they were doing a transition and the, uh, when, they, when they had this enterprise resource planning program, mm -hmm. you know, basically transi transiting from one system, an old system, to a new system technologically, you know. So there was a lot of changeover. So they really needed expertise on that. So I was there as a consultant and I was there for two years. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely wanted to stay with the UN, but this was like a contract. So mm -hmm. if the position has not been created, if it doesn't exist, you know, naturally at the end of your tenure, you, you have to go. Definitely. So I left the UN with that experience and I went to Deloitte, Deloitte and Touche Consulting. Mm -hmm. uh, I also served as a consultant there for two years, IT consultant and head of the risk and reputation unit mm -hmm. also. And um, at Deloitte, um, really, um, I also have to express my gratitude to the, to the, to the partners of Deloitte, uh, Mr. Alpha Barry and uh, the late Chair Jalo, who really um, uh, invested in me. Uh, that's because that's where I got my first opportunity to study abroad. Uh, when I went to India to do my Microsoft certification, became a Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist, MCTS, MCITP, and other stuff. Uh, and then uh, I also went to Kenya, also sponsored by Deloitte, you know, and um, really um, I have to say thank you to Deloitte and for making that So happen again, again yes. the importance yeah. of mentorship. Mentorship uh, again, yeah. And yeah. the um, importance yeah. of investing yeah. in human capital because yeah. I understand uh, the Singapore story which is yeah. very, uh, uh, very much part of the anecdotal yeah. Uh, bank uh, in the Gambia, we want to be like Singapore, mm -hmm. giving our size yeah. and mm -hmm. and the Singapore story. Whenever you hear about yeah. it, is this a uh, huge yeah. investment yeah. in human capital? Absolutely. And I think uh, if you have mentors, the right kind of mentors, uh, uh, where you work uh, 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 in in your institutions of learning. Yeah. I think that helps uh, the, the effort. So uh, all of this, of course, uh, then prepare you yeah. uh, for this life of an entrepreneur, Absolutely. which is uh, full of risk, Absolutely. which is full of uncertainty, Absolutely. especially in a country like Gambia, where the economy, let's face it, yeah. is dominated by non-Gambians. And uh, the financial sector uh, is also uh, a risk averse, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there are no uh, stock markets, capital markets. Yep. Uh, in a nutshell, yep. an ecosystem that can help entrepreneurship flourish True. does not exist. True. So, how did you venture into uh, Farm Fresh, for example? Yeah. So, fast forward, uh, when I left Deloitte, I briefly worked for Reliance also, Reliance Financial Services as the head of technology for two years. I later left and worked for um, GT Bank, uh, that was my last employment, Guarantee Trust Bank, also head of technology for two years. And in 20, 2011, that's when I decided, made that bold de decision. Actually, prior to 2011, around 20, between 2009 and 2010, I did venture out when I left um, uh, uh, Reliance and just wanted to do my own thing without proper planning. Uh, this is the life of an entrepreneur. That is to say that uh, you learn from your mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So I just went out and did my own, just had my own <laughs> ideas without any capital or anything like that and said I was offering my IT services and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, it went on and, but eventually, um, let's say, let's put it this way, I got stuck and I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is too tough, this is not for me, I'm not ready for this, you know, I'm struggling here and there. So that's when I went back to... Uh, okay, pause yeah. there, pause yeah. there. Yeah. What do you think uh, mm -hmm. could have helped you mm -hmm. not get stuck? Yeah. What, what, what in your own view yes. was missing, yeah. in, if you like, in the support, support system? system yeah. Because we then, I, I'm yeah. sure in those days, there are no incubators, no. there are no accelerators, no. Uh, there exactly. are no partnerships, exactly. or there is no YEP, exactly. uh, so exactly. to speak. Yeah. So, so wh wh what other things yeah. could have helped yeah. a young entrepreneur like you yeah. Yeah. Uh, break into uh, providing IT services? Because 
uh, it was shortly after that that we got the ACE cable exactly. and uh, our internet uh, yeah. connectivity yeah. Uh, start um, uh, you know, going up and I yeah. think new firms yeah. start uh, offering services uh, on, on, on uh, IT platforms. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Um, as you rightly stated, this was in 2009, so really there wasn't much going on in terms of support you know, from different partners like what we have today. Yep, and other institutions. Um, uh, but Gaipo was there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Gaipo was there. Yeah. I think Gypsa, and I think it was called Gypsa. Gypsa at the there. time. Yeah, yeah, at the time. Yeah. But not, nothing for young entrepreneurs. No, nothing for young entrepreneurs. There was yeah. no mentorship. What, what about no. the Chamber of Commerce? The uh, Chamber of Commerce was there, but I was not a member back then at that time. At the, at that but but did they have any programs? Because no. I understand the Emperor Tech came uh, oh, yeah, a little the later. Oh, yeah, the Emperor is very recent. That's yeah, the, uh, yes, 2014, yes. yes. Yeah. yes. I, I, I was asking along yes, those yes. lines yes, that, yes. you know, yeah, if yeah. there were other supporting uh, yes. activities yeah. that yeah. someone like you yeah. may have been, you know. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, there was none. There was yeah. really none. Uh, but then also, uh, as I stated, um, planning is always good, um, even if you don't have the proper support systems. Like, whenever you want to venture out into uh, business, like work, doing your own stuff, you should always take your time to do research, do your planning. Um, there's always an element of risk, but um, for example, market research really is very, very important. Um, that said, I was actually, I've always been running my IT company for the past 17 years, but on part-time basis. Okay. So this was an attempt to go full-time, yeah. full-blown, yeah. you know, without the capital, without the resources, you okay. don't even have an office, you just have your crazy ideas, you know. Yeah. You, you did not look at the option of partnerships uh, with, uh, with established, like your former mentors, yeah. Deloitte and Touche. Yes. Uh, maybe I, they would want to invest in, in something like that. Yeah, probably not my former mentor, but to be honest, um, one of the other things that, that um, caused me or frustrated me was the fact that I approached many companies in the Gambia. I did presentations, I wrote proposals to tens, I mean, lots of companies introducing my company and what we do, our services, meetings upon meetings. Uh, but guess what? Uh, in the end, uh, some of the proposals were, I would say, given uh, to some other people, maybe modified a little bit um, and some would just give you empty promises yes 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 we were thinking about it and in the end they would give it to a foreign entity that would do the the, 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 the the job you know so this was very common back then compared to now i think it's improving a little bit uh, they're um, entrusting gambians with more uh, projects you know uh, of, of course still not of substantial magnitude uh, up to now uh, there's no Gambian IT company that is doing a substantial IT project, you know, like at the World Bank level. Uh, there are little partnerships here and there, but I'm talking about mega projects like multi million dollar projects whereby you can have some kind of a, a congruent. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I always make a mistake. I, I always struggle to pronounce the word, mm -hmm. but basically to come together, like having Ag aggregation, you mean? Aggregation of IT companies coming yeah. together yes. to bid for multi million dollar projects. Mm -hmm. You know, this is still a challenge because we are all working in silos. You know, you're in your little corner. This one is in its little well, corner. What do you think is responsible for that? Um, I don't know, but I know one of the reasons, definitely from my experience, is uh, lack of trust mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, maybe honesty between partners. What, what do you uh, think of the uh, legal and regulatory framework? Yes, because uh, in yeah. most countries yeah. now. Uh, one way of making sure that uh, uh, native sons and daughters and yeah. native uh, uh, projects uh, having the famous local content yeah. is for yeah. government yeah. to do some positive uh, discrimination Absolutely. in favor of, of uh, nationals. Absolutely. I see sometimes even the UN yeah. insists that yeah. the position is only open for yeah. Uh, nationals exactly. and they even encourage exactly. uh, female applicants. Exactly. So, so I think uh, to some extent yeah. this is also for us, yes. uh, we are on the political economy yes. hour. Yeah. I think that is one area where 
uh, we need, uh, I guess, uh, some uh, further lobbying, Absolutely. some some championship, Absolutely. because I, I think uh, public-private partnership mm -hmm. really has the opportunity yeah. to transform uh, a lot of things. Absolutely. Uh, for example, uh, uh, because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, countries and companies with very robust online platforms mm -hmm have been doing great business yeah. uh, because um, you don't have to go uh, to their uh, outlets, you don't have to have a face-to-face -face yeah. interaction. Yeah. So, so for me, this is uh, extremely important that we live in an era where you have uh, global value chains uh, that extend you know, all over the world. Absolutely. And at the touch of a button, you can make your uh, requests, you can get whatever it is that you want, Absolutely. and it would be delivered to the port of Banjul. Absolutely. So really, I, I think this is one area where I, I would like to hear your thoughts and yeah. uh, uh, what are the opportunities yeah. uh, for, for partnership so that we can scale, yeah. we can aggregate, yeah. we can integrate uh, instead of operating uh, in different silos. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think I think uh, you said it all. Really, uh, we really need to work on some government policies that would encourage such partnerships to take place. Um, we have the ITAG, that's the Information in, Information Technology Association of the Gambia, of which I'm a member. I'm also a, a former vice president, uh, vice president of the Internet Society. Gambia chapter, the late Lajonda was our president and I was working very closely yeah. with him. May he so please, rest please, peace. Yeah, please accept my condolences. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. I have an really uh, opportunity a wonderful to wonderful person. Really, really. Yeah, very always, brilliant. Yes, you know. very, very, extremely, extremely brilliant. You know, uh, and really uh, sad. Yeah. We, may, may his memory be a blessing yeah. for all of us I mean, I mean, in, this, uh, yeah. in this country. I think um, I mean, uh, nobody is, uh, like the Econ song says, yes. nobody is promised tomorrow. That's true. So it is today that we have, let us be good to each other, let us try and raise our game That's so that uh, people who are dispossessed, people yeah. who are uh, without voice, yeah can find a voice, can find inspiration uh, in, in a story like yours. Yeah. I, I really uh, want us now to talk about yeah. uh, the possibilities yeah. uh, on, 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 of, of globalization, yeah. um, uh, farm fresh, yeah. uh, how it started, yeah. uh, without telling us the secret sauce, yeah. <laughs> but uh, what are the prospects? I mean, we just came out from yeah what appears to be a very yeah. uh, productive uh, yeah. rainy season. Yeah. Um, uh, it's uh, regrettable that our agriculture is still rain-fed. Mm -hmm. Our agriculture is predominantly mm -hmm. peanut yeah. focused. Yeah. Um, I would like to really yeah. uh, understand yeah. that ecosystem. Yeah. What is there? What are the prospects? Yeah. What do you think, for example, policy can do yeah. to support that? Yeah. What do you think that Gambians, uh, as individuals, as uh, organizations, can do to support uh, that ecosystem so that it can be a benefit to all of us? Yeah, yeah rightly stated. Um, From Fresh started in 2013, uh, born out of a desire to, to, to make a difference in the agricultural value chain. In terms of, uh, I, I, I identified it. I identified a need, uh, a gap in the value chain in terms of uh, marketing and distribution, which is really key in, in the value chain. And uh, as you rightly know, uh, we have a lot of farmers, predominantly women, who really work very hard to produce uh, good quality vegetables, uh, but they lack the resources to you know, market these vegetables, to transport them, to store them. So they were left at the mercy of these middlemen, with no offense to the middlemen, but uh, who would really take advantage over them and maybe offer them any price, uh, because they know that if they don't buy from these, if they don't sell to the middlemen, there's a high probability of the produce getting spoiled. Because it's very perishable. It's very perishable, it's mm -hmm. very perishable. So this is where we came in to, to reduce the gap in the value chain by partnering with them to, to purchase their produce, 
and sell market and sell their produce at a, at a, at a fair trade price you know uh, we believe in fair trade we don't believe in exploitation so our tra our prices are very transparent if you go to our platform farmfresh.gm you'll see our prices and you can be the judge you can assess and compare it with uh, I, I can testify okay. I have uh, uh, oh, yeah. bought a lot of fresh uh, vegetables exactly. avocados exactly. Uh, peanuts exactly. uh, butter um, really yeah. high quality, high quality. Uh, uh, products exactly. uh, I, I was really very impressed and I think it's one of the reasons yeah. <laughs> why I said yeah. why don't we start this uh, yes. maiden program uh, on, on this yeah. uh, just for our viewers uh, we are watching the uh, political economy hour uh, my name is Almami Funding Tal uh, like I said at the beginning of this conversation this is going to be a Gambian Watan Gambian Kacha, uh, where we will talk to uh, sons and daughters of this country who are doing extremely well to try and raise the profile of this country, to try and bring about sustainable development, to try and uh, uh, dispel, expel uh, this notion that young people are lazy, they are not doing anything. Uh, as part of the conversation, you, you could hear Mr. Njai made it absolutely clear that women particularly work so hard, but because of the fear that their produce may become uh, uh, unfresh, may become uh, uh, low grade because they don't have proper storage uh, facilities. So Mr. Njai, that is a very important point yeah. because once the vegetable goes bad, yeah. it becomes waste. Yeah. And it's a loss. It's a loss, yeah. not only to the woman, yeah. but to the poor household exactly. that could have otherwise bought it at a reasonable price. Absolutely. Because once uh, you have a harvest of, let's say, tomato, yeah. it seems as if everybody would have a harvest of tomato. So the market becomes uh, yeah. uh, glutted, yeah. and you you have to be very competitive uh, to be able to sell your produce. Exactly. Of course, uh, from tomatoes you can make tomato paste. Yes, you course. can make tomato ketchup. Yeah. Value addition. Yeah. Value addition. Yeah. How is the ecosystem yeah. in the Gambia uh, to support something like that? Yeah, I, I think uh, we have a long way to go when it, when it comes to value addition. I, th I think we, let's just put it this way, we have a lot to learn from Senegal. I've, I've been to Senegal so many times and uh, I have seen the strides that they've made over the years, over the past 20, 15, 20 years. Uh, and uh, when it comes to packaging and all that, really uh, what they've done now is that They've, went to the, they've gone to the next level, mm -hmm. which is to add value to the raw products. Uh, look at the, uh, what do you call it? Um, malo, 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 naga? Walo. Malo, walo, mm -hmm. you know, it's so popular now in yeah. Senegal. That's all they eat. Yeah. And it's, this is high quality rice. It's not imported, mm -hmm. yet it's, it's probably, it's not probably, it's better than the imported rice. Mm -hmm. You go to the poultry side, mm -hmm. they don't import poultry. There's a I don't know, an embargo or a ban on poultry. Uh, you go, like, when I talk about poultry, I mean the eggs and mm -hmm. the chicken, you mm -hmm. know, they don't import that. that, that yeah. That's phenomenal. I think that is, can you imagine, if when you, I'm not a mathematician, but if you equate, the, if you do the numbers and, you know, compare, you know, the, um, the, the amount of poultry products that they've been importing, I mean, the tax, the cost on that, compare that with uh, the produce, the local produce mm -hmm. and the revenue, the income that has been generated, the jobs that have been created, you can see that um, it's it's incomparable. You can't compare the two. So, this is this is uh, the. This do, is do you know from your research whether the Senegalese government uh, was playing a positive role, or it just leave it to market forces? No, from my research, definitely uh, the Senegalese government were playing a very positive role in this. Uh, they were very proactive. They were coming up with the, the proper policies that would really uh, encourage people to, to venture into such 
um, areas, that is agriculture, you know, uh, be, be it horticulture, be it poultry, be it animal husbandry, you know, they even provide um, uh, uh, support, financial support. Subsidies. Subsidies. Yes. Um, as you know, there are the, we have a lot of imported products from Senegal. Absolutely. Which are competing with our local products. Absolutely. And we can't compete because the prices are low because they're subsidized by, the, by their governments. Uh, so this is another area that... Yeah, yeah. But, but I think uh, we, will, yeah. we will probably another, uh, yeah. uh, hook our conversation <laughs> yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, since it's our maiden edition, yeah. we don't want to upset uh, yeah. the timing of, uh, yeah. of uh, Paradise TV. Yeah. But back to the word subsidy. Yeah. I think a lot of the uh, people uh, who are watching this program probably do not understand mm -hmm. how it operates. Yeah. Uh, every activity happening yeah. in an economy mm -hmm. is subject to taxation by the government. Exactly. When the government stop putting mm -hmm. taxes on those uh, economic activities, mm -hmm. that is what is known as subsidy. Exactly. Another form of subsidy that is possible mm -hmm. is for the government mm -hmm. to buy yeah. all your produce exactly. at a reasonable price. Right. Yeah so as to influence yeah. the market exactly. so that uh, anybody who wants to buy it yeah. from you will have to up yeah. uh, the government price so these are uh, these are for me these are important uh, takeaways from our conversation Absolutely. that uh, the role of government in the political economy is significant yeah. and uh, every aspect of our lives is controlled by law and uh, laws are made by governments yeah. And uh, Mr. Jai, I really want to thank you uh, for setting us off today uh, on the maiden edition of our program. We've learned your journey. Uh, we've seen that um, uh, you have tried uh, so many things. Yeah. And finally, the secret sauce seems to be on the plate. Yeah. And uh, we will encourage uh, Gambians across the board to look to agriculture because I was going to ask you about uh, whether you have interacted with Radville Farms who have been in the Gambia yes. for many years yes. and they have been uh, successful uh, in uh, making uh, green uh, development uh, a reality. So on that note, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wonderful uh, program starting uh, on uh, Paradise TV. Uh, I want to thank my guests uh, for the first edition, Mr. Njai. And I look forward to uh, your continued uh, success and continuous effort. Uh, again, every Monday, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, we will have this conversation amongst ourselves with our brothers, with our sisters. Thank you very much for watching. happened.